Outgoing President Rodrigo Duterte's war on drugs killed thousands of Filipinos. Human rights groups claim that Philippine police and vigilantes murdered unarmed drug suspects on a massive scale on Duterte's watch. Allegations that authorities have denied. The International Criminal Court last year announced it would pursue an investigation of suspected crimes against humanity. Now, some of the families upended by the drug war say they are tired of living in fear and want justice. Aurora Blass found her husband, Thelmo, dead in 2016, with what looked like a bullet hole in his head. But that's not what his death certificate says. It reads that he died of pneumonia. She couldn't afford to pay for the expenses related to an autopsy to prove otherwise. So she agreed to the lie so she could bury Thelmo, her husband of three decades. Thelmo had worked driving jeepneys, public buses that are a popular way to get around the Philippines. He worked hard to make ends meet, taking longer shifts. Aurora said he began to use shabu, the local name for methamphetamine, to keep exhaustion at bay. Aurora was worried about retaliation from government authorities if she spoke out about his death. So she didn't until now. Bali ang tama niya dito eh, sa Maykana. Ang laki talaga ng butas. Kitang-kita na yung halos loob. Malinis na siya kasi makita mo siya puti na eh. Tapos yun. Tapos inangat ng anak ko yung ulo niya. Tumag may tagos dito. A police report said officers responded to reports of gunfire and found his body dumped by the side of the road with three packets of suspected methamphetamine and a sign saying, I am a pusher. Do not copy me. Police did not respond to a request for comment about whether anyone has been arrested or if the case is still under investigation. Reuters found that some funeral homes have grieving relatives sign in-house waivers, attesting that their loved ones died of natural causes and that they won't dispute the cause of death. Three people familiar with the practice said it is a way to save poor families the costs that come with an autopsy. And it's a way for funeral homes to protect against legal liability if families later challenge the certificate. Aurora says she wasn't provided with a copy of the waiver at the funeral home. However, she says she couldn't afford to pay for the nearly $300 that funeral home staff told her would be required after an autopsy to restore Thelmo's body for burial. So she signed, a decision that haunts her. Reuters spoke to other families like Aurora's, who also said their loved one's death certificates listed causes of death that did not reflect their violent ends. Nearly six years after Aurora buried her husband, a desire to set the record straight led her to a forensic pathologist, Raquel Fortune. Fortune is looking at remains of some of the poorest drug war victims. She says she has found gunshot wounds, fractures, even bullets in the nearly two dozen sets of remains. Here she examines another case. The x-ray of this particular individual actually showed a uh, possible bullet. And I remember noting it down as a left axillary area. So I would you know, know where to search. And so we, we find what looks like a bullet, okay, a fired bullet, here in the left arm area. Reuters has found cases of at least 15 drug war victims whose death certificates don't reflect the violent manner in which police and relatives say they died. Fortune hopes her work could kick off a thorough investigation if not by Philippine authorities, then by the International Criminal Court, or ICC, headquartered in The Hague. Finally, there's an opportunity to, that's it, to check, to really see, did, could this individual have died of natural causes as claimed? And the families would say, no, 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 he was shot, so he could not have died of pneumonia. And now you have the bones laid before you, and you see the fractures. It is not a natural death, so who's telling the truth? 
In September, the ICC announced it would pursue an investigation of suspected crimes against humanity. It estimates between 12,000 and 30,000 people were killed between July 2016 and March 2019 in the Philippine drug war. That probe is now on hold as the court considers a deferral request from the Philippines, which asserts the country can adequately investigate itself. Duterte's spokesperson has said his government will not cooperate with the ICC investigation, which it claims was, quote, legally erroneous and politically motivated. An ICC spokesperson declined to comment on when a decision would be made. Meanwhile, Fortune is running out of room, so after she finishes her examinations, the remains are cremated and returned to the families. According to the Philippine government, the official number of drug war deaths is just over 6,200. Now, in an improbable turn of events, the poverty of families hit by the drug war is leading to new evidence. In the Philippines, burial plots are leased for five years. If the family can't afford to extend, the remains are exhumed and moved to a mass grave. As leases come due, relatives like Aurora are agreeing to Fortune's offer to examine remains. Father Flavi Villanueva works with Fortune and has anticipated the graves coming due. He runs a support group for drug war families in Manila. He oversees the exhumations and sends the remains to Fortune to examine. The autopsy, of course, will be of great value in the coming days, in the coming years, once a thorough investigation takes place, how these people were killed and how even this war on drugs simply was an act of terror for those living in the margins. The nation's Department of Justice Secretary Minato Guevara told Reuters his office would, quote, investigate and prosecute those who were responsible for the falsification of death certificates. Duterte, the outgoing president of the Philippines, has defended his drug war and denied any wrongdoing. He is due to leave office on June 30th.